Hello, Jenny Hall here for Trinity Stamps. Welcome to day one of the 12 Days of Christmas series from Trinity Stamps Creative Team. Today my card will feature the Slimline Wide Pop-Out Box Dies. These are so much fun. And I'm going to be using the Happy Little Tree Farm die set to do some decorating. You can see here that you can assemble the trees in any way. There are even little faces. Let's go step by step on how to assemble this box. The base is going to take two die cuts and then the very large rectangle will take two die cuts as well. I'm using 110 pound white cardstock for this project and I cut one of those from some pattern paper. I'm going to cut two pieces for the bridge section, and that's from the 110 pound. And then I'm going to cut one of each die for the long, narrow rectangles, and then two of each of the small squares. To do the adhesion of the box, you can use some double-sided tape or some liquid glue. Just for the video purposes today, I'm using double-sided adhesive because it's going to allow me to assemble the box much quicker. However, I recommend liquid glue because it will allow you just enough time to slide the piece in exactly where you like it. Some of the pieces are going to need to be scored. There is already a score line and we are just going to burnish those score lines with a bone folder. Trinity Stamps has a ergonomic bone folder and a long, um, a long pointy one <laughs> as well. And I use both of these bone folders. They're made from Teflon and they are av available in the Trinity store. You can even get them at a discounted bundle rate. Check the video description for links. So the first thing that I'm going to do before I start peeling off that backing tape is to fold over and burnish every one of those little creases. And now I'm going to use one of the box bases and I'm going to establish the outside and the inside. So the ones that the flaps that are folded down to the outside, that's going to be the outside of the card base. And then I'm going to make the back piece be stationary. So there is a place that's blank on the back and it will allow me to write a greeting. Once we know the outside and the inside of the card, it's easy to know where to place some of those little die cut decoration pieces. So the squares and the long narrow rectangles are for decoration of the outside of the box. There is a larger and a smaller. You only need to lay them against each other to determine which one fits better in which area. So we're going to have all four sides of the box decorated. The very back has already got those, those really big rectangles. And so we've got the outside covered and now we're doing the inside flaps that fold outward and I'm going to use some silver glitter paper for that. I thought that would be really fun as it would sort of look like snow, but maybe just like really fancy. So each one of the card base die cuts has got this little tab that is part of the die cut, and that's what makes each piece stick together. So I'm putting a little bit of liquid glue on top of that double-sided tape just to give me a few seconds of wiggle room which I usually need and by adhering the tab on the left hand side to the box card back that's on the right hand side that is now a complete card. We'll have to close it up on the other side after our bridge section is assembled. So let's get those bridge pieces in place. I'm going to have them a little bit up, maybe a half an inch from that upper fold line. So the way I like to do it is to just lay down 
the piece and then fold the top or the front of the box, fold it over with the adhesive on the bridge section, and then it kind of picks it up. And that's going to help it lay down naturally. And then while I've got it like this, I'm going to add some adhesive to the right hand side of the bridge, fold over the right hand side of the box card, and then that's going to close over onto that bridge section and pick it up. Now this is the way that I have found that it helps the box to lay down naturally. And then once those bridge sections are adhered on the left and the right, we're gonna close the left flap over onto the right tab, glue it down, and that's it. This is the Happy Little Tree Farm die set. And Trinity Stamps does have some resources for you to be able to kind of put them together, kind of like a guide. So if you haven't, if you if you like this die set and you get it and you need a little bit more help putting them together, then just pop over to trinitystamps.com and find the product page and download that little picture graphic and stip it into the die set like I did and you'll always have that as a resource to go to. These dies create five different unique trees. However, they can be used with each other. You can make even more possibilities. So tree number one, you can use the first section on top of other pieces from like tree number four or tree number five. I chose to put them together as they were shown on the guide from Trinity Stamps just because I wanted to keep it very simple for you to be able to see what I'm doing. Now there is a wooden sign and I have die cut it from two colors, from round and white, and then cut away the post and made a little paper piecing out of it. Now I'm using some alcohol friendly ink. This is blackout ink from Ink on 3 that is available in the Trinity store. I'm stamping that onto some Express It Blending cardstock as this is a really great paper for Copic markers. I'm going to do some really easy Copic coloring here, usually just a three color blend, and I'll give you some information about this little Santa. The name of the stamp set that he is from is called Shake Your Merry Maker. <laughs> and that's one thing that we can always count on from Trinity Stamps is a really fun and whimsical name to a lot of the products. So I'm going to color him in traditional Santa colors, but he's going to be placed in a different kind of setting. The stamp set that he comes with because it's called Shake Your Merry Maker, kind of gives it away a little bit. He looks like he's dancing, and there is even a disco ball in his stamp set. Yes, a disco ball. So in the coordinating dies, it, there's a couple of different die pieces that will help you build a disco ball. So if you ever wished on your Christmas wish list that there was a die set out there that would let you make a disco ball then Santa's bringing your wish come true. <laughs> I'm not putting the disco ball in this project, but it will be fun, especially for New Year's. So once Santa is colored up and I'm going to use the coordinating die to die cut him out, then I'm going to place all of those five little trees and the little sign and Santa, I'm going to place all of them in the box die. Some of the pieces will be adhered down to the bridge section, which is those two little paper pieces, and some of them to the back, and some of them even to the inside of the front. And I think that it gives a really nice depth to be able to place them on four different surfaces. You've got four different layers of depth going. My one piece of advice when adhering the items is to please be mindful of how high you place them and check as you go. Because some of these little trees, if I adhere them to where they're standing up nice and tall, then they're going to stick out over the very top of the base of the card. And that's not going to make it easy for me to mail this card. 
Now, I want to raise up some of these trees because some of them are much smaller than the other trees. And so I've cut little tiny strips of cardstock and that has helped me be able to just give them a little bit of a raise and like maybe an eighth of an inch that would really make a difference. But uh, there is the possibility that I could get them too high, which you can see here, the, the one in the very back, it sticks up out of the back side. So I'm gonna have to take that little guy off and I'm going to have to move it down. I just peeled it back off. The it had started to settle in, but it was it was still movable enough to where some more fresh glue and I could get him in a different place. Of course, when using liquid glue and this type of product project, it's really great to make sure that no glue gushes out from the other side of the pieces that you're adding. The reason is because sometimes whenever a glue dries it can become really tacky. And if it is going to do that, if it's gonna be really tacky, then when you lay the box card flat to mail it, then it could permanently set itself. And then whoever opens it would not be able to pop it right back out into place. Here's a look at the Merry Christmas Senti Mini stamp and die set and I'm not using the stamps this go around I'm just using the dies I've chosen to make the detail portion out of white paper and I have the shadow area out of some vellum and I'm going to adhere that to the front inside flap because when this is flattened out and mailed you won't see the Merry Christmas portion and that's it it's really easy put together. You can see two versions here. This is the version we just created. And then here's another more clean and simple version where the back is actually folded down instead of using those super large rectangles. Either way works. It's just whatever you prefer. And it's a great opportunity to use some beautiful pattern paper from the Trinity store. I would love to hear which version you like better and if you have given these dies a, a try, I'd love to hear how you like them. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.